It's snowing, but there's not enough snow on the ski hill to have the full mountain open. They said that this weekend they're going to open up the quad, so that'll be good. But uh, it's still not enough snow that it's easy for me to ski with my kids, so we'll probably wait another week on that. But it's exciting. It's nice to have some fresh snow around here. But we had so little snow before that we were like really kind of lacking. So that means that there's not enough snow quite to go skiing yet, but there's enough snow to like kind of get things ready. So let's go have some fun. I don't have snow tires on my car yet. It's still pretty slick. Maybe we can have a little bit of fun before we get our snow tires on. So apologies for the quality today. I think I'm just gonna do kind of a shoot from the car type thing. But like I said, I'm sick. It's snowing out. There's not enough snow for the whole mountain to be open. I think it's just gonna be a low key day. So let's talk about something I've been wanting to talk about, bindings. So a lot of people ask me, Elliot, how do you pick out your bindings? And honestly, it's kind of a weird thing. It's almost like you just pick something that works and you only ever really notice when it doesn't work. But for me, I run the Look SPX12. Probably could be in a higher DIN. Um, ideally, probably could go with a higher end binding, like a pivot. But I don't because I don't ski freestyle and I don't need kind of that side to side give that those skis have. I'm mostly carving and the Look SPX12 is affordable. Last summer I got it for 140, but it's also reliable. I love Look bindings. The first thing I need to do is I need to take off this snow mode because basically it makes it so driving's a little bit more fun. Um, ideally, like if you want to be good at driving in the snow, I feel like you want a stick shift. That's kind of the most fun. But let's talk about bindings. Now bindings are kind of funny because I almost feel like bindings are a little bit like seatbelts. Uh, you only notice bindings when they don't do their job or when they don't work right. Same, like, have you ever thought about what kind of seatbelt manufacturer you have? You may have thought about the car and everything else, but it's safety equipment. And like I said, you only notice it when it doesn't work right. The bindings that I look for are typically look, just because I've had really good luck with them. I've had some marker bindings in the past when I raced that I wasn't thrilled by. They just, whoa, going sideways. They just had a lot of issues. Whereas my looks have kind of always held steady. Marker used to have this kind of white and red binding that was just super easy to clip out. So, yeah, I typically prefer the looks. Basically with the binding, you have two springs on either side and they kind of compress to hold your foot down. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that, but basically you're looking for the right amount of force, and that's why they have all these scales and everything, where the ski will eject you, right? Um, if you get twisted or if you crash, you want the binding to eject you so that you don't get further hurt, tear your ACL, stuff like that. But on the flip side, like you want it to release at the right time, but you also don't want it to be so low of a din for your weight or skiing ability that it ejects you easily, right? Because then you're just crashing <laughs> when you shouldn't be. I've had bindings that didn't have the din or the forward pressure set correctly, so I crashed. Um, that's the basics, you have your toe piece and your heel piece and they both kind of have these springs that are pushing you forward and the din is basically how well they're able to lock your foot in. And then if your foot twists, in the case of like something that's gonna injure your knee, they're able to release. In the past, like five, 10 years, Solomon and Atomic, which I think they're the same binding, but the Solomon and Atomic bindings I've heard are really good. I've demoed some skis and really like them. I've also had Tyrolia demos that were okay. Uh, historically, Tyrolia has been so-so with their quality. Marker is the one that I just can't get over. I've crashed enough times on marker bindings that I really don't trust them. And not to say like I've heard that their current products are good, but man, it's like once you've been burnt by that, it's really hard to trust it again. Yeah, we are sliding out a lot. I mean, part of it, I've got a rear wheel drive, I've got a rear wheel drive vehicle, so, you know, it's not like meant for snow necessarily, but it does great. It's got a V6 and everything. Um, but definitely time to get the studded snow tires on if I want to go up to the mountain. Because even just going around the neighborhood is kind of tough. It's like I love skiing, but I also love being safe. But yeah, when it comes to bindings, it's one of those things where 
I understand why the look pivot is so popular because a lot of times I'm like, man, is everyone really using these like 13 din bindings or is it kind of just a status symbol? Probably a little bit of both, right? But I think the biggest thing is that like when it comes to safety, people want to like almost overperform. So I get it. I think the look SPX 12 that I have is probably more than enough for most people. I think this winter I'm gonna to try to review the pivots because I do think that they make nice stuff. The other really hard thing about bindings that I found, if you have no clue on what you should get, it can be really hard to know, like, you know, because you just kind of have to follow a graph of what bindings to get, or at least like as far as din size goes, and then you also gotta figure out width. I bet that it's like super intimidating for intermediate or below skiers to kind of figure that out. So it makes sense when I see a lot of these shops selling them as bundles. Um, I've also noticed that pricing this time of year is just, oh, it's 250 for bindings. But like all summer I could find bindings for 130, 140, 150 easily. So, you know, if you're only seeing them for 250, it's kind of a seasonal thing. They're not always that price. So yeah, there's Subaru doing donuts, but they're on the main road. <laughs> I love donuts, but don't do it where everyone else is driving. Yeah, you're gonna be looking at like, for bindings, there's just no good way around it. You're probably gonna be spending at least 150 to 200. Um, you know, I guess unless you've got lower dins, but don't, don't try to save money and get lower dins. If you're a bigger, heavier person that's really loading up the boot, get the right din. It's just not worth it. The other thing that people don't always realize is like you can only put so many sets of binding into your ski. Like when you mount them, you're drilling holes into the ski. So like if you decide, oh, I don't like these look pivots, I'm gonna sell them and get markers. It's like, yeah, I think, you, what do they say? You usually get like two or three sets of holes to drill. So just be mindful of that. Like be really careful when you're ordering your bindings and you're making that decision. Do it carefully, do some research into it. Make sure you're getting something that you like. But bindings are hard to recommend. It's like any safety equipment. You only notice it when it sucks. Same for helmets, like, you only notice helmets when they're crappy. Like, I had a shred helmet that I hated. And I love shred goggles, which is weird, but the helmet was just made cheaply. The earpiece fell apart. They were cold, wind got through them easily. It's not until you have a bad helmet that you realize how good your good helmet was. If that makes any sense. So, I get a lot of people asking me to review bindings. I think the tricky part about reviewing bindings is that you have to put real mileage on them to know whether they're good or not. But that's just my two cents. Um, my personal opinion that's not really based on a lot of fact other than mileage is that I really like look bindings. I had the look um, race series. I think it's like called the P race series for years and years and years. I have the look SPX 12 that I love. I've had nothing but good luck with look, so that's why I go with it. But yeah, sorry for kind of the informal. Like I said, I'm sick, it's snowy, I can't go up skiing because there's not enough snow to actually ski. Um, I don't have studded snow tires on, so I'm not gonna mess around with that until it's safe to drive up. But, you know what? I wanna give you some kind of content, so. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know it's a little different, but just wanted to put a video out for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out a lot. But more than anything, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.